So it's been more than a week that I'm using the latest Project Infinity X version 3.5 on the Poco A5. Today I'm gonna be giving you my experience with it and this is the second December 2025 build. And this one of course has the December security patch and stuff. I'll show you each and every detail of it. So stay tuned till the end of the video. This is the official build, not the unofficial build by the way. And this is not on QPR1. I know I'm aware that there is QPR1 build of Evolution X. I will be trying it. I was quite sick, so I couldn't actually get my hands on that. Then in the normal about status, we have the Project Infinity X logo or the text you can say, and this is the version 3.5 official again, and the wallpaper shows up right there, and this shows the device specification and everything. And obviously, this is based on Android 16. Again, not QPR 1. This is QPR 0, you can say. And the maintainer is of course Pablo Escobar. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. And we have the December 1st, 2025. It has very light system apps, I would say. Just the normal phone dialer and the gallery app. And there is the camera and stuff. But the other apps that you are noticing like the Bing, this Palette AI was getting downloaded because I was restoring my Google App Data Backup. And one more thing is that earlier you guys know that Infinity X used to come with all the like three play integrity stuff passed. But here in this 3.5 from now, they have actually mentioned in the changelog that it is no longer passing the safety net or the play integrity right out of the box. So you will need to actually find a key box yourself. Obviously, I'll try to link them in the description, but most of the key boxes that were there earlier, if a lot of people uses it, Google definitely blocks it. But after you try the key box, which was given the safety net actually passed or the play integrity things actually passed. And right now, let me show you even in Play Store. Here you will see it shows device is certified. So that's a good thing. We will just use the dark theme so that you guys can see better. And obviously it still has the normal features like this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos at no extra charge. So those things are still there. The IR Blaster here still works. Well, as I was talking about the pre integrity things, let me talk about one more thing are the banking apps, obviously, because most of the banking apps are working here with the key box applied. But in some ROMs like Evolution X, I have tried the Google Pay was not working even with the working key box. But here, Google Pay is actually working. So that's a really nice thing about this Infinity X. So I am definitely liking to really drive on this ROM because I don't see a lot of issues at all. I'll talk about one issue that I have faced here. Once I unlock the device, I go to the quick setting panel or just the notification panel. I try to expand it. As you can see right now, it is getting expanded. But sometimes I have seen once I unlock, it just refuses to expand fully this like full quick setting panel i can't really get into it because it just gets stuck when there are a lot of notification and everything even without that sometimes it just can't expand so that bug i have faced i'll show you a video or something on the screen but yeah this is a weird bug but just locking the device and unlocking it with the finger scanner again actually fixes that bug so that's one minor issue i would say that i have faced in this rom except for that the daily driving experience was a breeze in this rom let me show you the overall ui performance here let's open chrome and let's open x play store youtube google home let's open other apps like this xiaomi Mi home app Let's open this archive kind of apps. Now, if I open them one by one by just sliding on the like pill bar, as you can see, all the apps are opening fine and they are still in memory and everything, even if you open multiple different apps, like 10 plus apps, all the apps almost stays in memory. And by the way, this is the base variant of this phone. This is not even the top variant. This is the 8 GB RAM variant. And although even with that, I would say everything just works flawlessly. As you can see, the app opening speed from the memory, very smooth. And here are the Android 10 Geekbench score and the other benchmarks that I have tested on this specific build so that you can get an idea about the overall UI performance. In my experience, I have to say here that this is slightly better than the QPR Zero build of Evolution X that I have tried in terms of overall performance. And even the battery life here is slightly better, in my experience at least. Is this bug just keeps annoying me? <laughs> but let me just unlock. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. Normal charging control, but if you enable that, obviously your fast charging speeds will just drop. In the battery information, we have the battery temperature and everything. And just look at the charging cycles I have. This is about 1100 plus charging cycles, almost 1200 I would say. So this is huge charging cycles I have on this battery. But there are thermal profiles. Yes, I have tested that with the like benchmarking apps. And there are, as you can see, performance, browser, camera, dialer, all these things. You can customize it too. But right now, let me talk about the battery life that I have tested with the Aku battery app. And with that, the screen on time here, it's just really good. It's almost eight hours. These are all estimated numbers, but still the battery life in my experience overall, I would say it's just better. 
we have screen off that is 28 hours that's standby and the combined use shows as 11 hours and 20 minutes so that's a really good number in terms of overall like battery life in the health section for me it shows up as 78 percent which is not that great but yeah i can get through it and the fast charging speeds here is good and here let me show you if you tap and hold on the pill bar and make a circular search is that is actually working and just look at that animation it looks so good and even with the circular search there is translate text option translate text and stuff it's totally working no problems at all and even the normal Gemini you can swipe from the corners it will work as you can see it's directing my body or something if you don't know how to flash this from on your device obviously the flashing guide will be listed in the description box below the stock camera here is still the Leica kind of camera and it has the 1x 2x all these kind of lenses and taking a photo it's very fast no problems whatsoever by the way i recently reviewed the realme buds air 7 you can check that out from the cards and in the video settings there is 1080p and 4k up to 30 fps if you shoot 4k but if you go 1080p there is obviously 1060 but if you want 4k 60 you can obviously use a gcam for that i'll list a video in the description there is documents mode there is pro mode and stuff there is pro mode videos as well you can shoot up to again 4k 30 and portrait mode photos and videos should be working fine no need to worry i'll give you some samples here with the stock camera but yeah definitely you can use a gcam if you do have the 4k 60 fps kind of capabilities with the rear camera the quick setting panel looks very good and it has the edit option and it has huge huge amount of toggles just notice the amount of options and in this the flashlight actually let me show you Yes, you can just normally turn it on but if you just tap and hold over here it has this functionality where you can increase the brightness of this it is very helpful but even if i have it set to a lot low let me show you i have it just to three percent it is turned on but let me show you this is a minor thing i am turning it off with the power button long press to torch but here right now if i do that again as you can see turns on the torch at 100% brightness so this is very useful <laughs> i know it's minor thing but yeah it was very useful as you can see right now i cannot really go into the quick setting panel expanded this bug sometimes happens but again that's fixed right now and yes there are quick share and everything they are working totally fine and the bluetooth earbuds bluetooth speakers everything is working fine with this geo's 5g speeds are working fine it's getting about 540 plus of download speeds so yeah 5g is not a problem and even cellular video calling and everything is working fine here of course if your region supports vnr it is also supported so you can place a call while you are on 5g there are usb configuration and there are the gestures and there is quick tap kind of actions double tap on power button and one handed mode obviously is still there it is working lift to check phone is there let me show you yes it is working fine by the way talking about the lock screen clocks if i go into the wallpapers and styles here into the lock screen obviously there are the lock screen clock styles they look beautiful in my opinion almost forgot to talk about the stock launcher well the best feature about the stock launcher is that you can just double tap anywhere in the home screen and it will just go to sleep just look at this this is very convenient and useful and even with the always on display just look at the animation double tap to wake and double tap to sleep everything just super good and unlock just look at this animation looks beautiful but yeah the unlocking speed it's perfectly fast and smooth and obviously there is app lock and this is how the app lock window looks like if you tap the image scanner obviously it will unlock and go wherever you left it there are these advanced protection you can enable that and even private space option is there in the more security there is theft and snatch kind of protection you can enable that yes there is face unlock but i haven't enabled that because i don't use it that much in the sound settings this is how it looks like we have the dolby atmos there is the dynamic profiles there is the graphic equalizer and everything you can customize there is bass enhancer and the other sound settings you can notice the volume bar actually looks like this it looks beautiful you can expand it and you can change the output device from right here in the app settings this is how it looks like yes there is the cloned apps as well so you can use two accounts of whatsapp or facebook if you'd like to there is app lock settings in the app settings obviously in the game space you can add any game and you can have a overlay with this in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the dark theme yes there is the pure black mode i have enabled that there is night light there is live display colors you can change and let me show you there is screen refresh it obviously i have it set to 120 hertz all the time most of the time i would say because both maximum and minimum you can change and you can change it to even 90 hertz if you'd like to so this is really nice even per app refresh it you can actually choose it to be 60 90 or 120 this is really good we have extreme refresh it i think that will force the display to run at 120 hertz all the time so you can use that if you would want that but yeah it will drain a little bit more battery in my opinion 
We have the allow window level blurs. We have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen both. High touch polling date is there. Per app refresh rate is once again there. I don't know why. But yeah, these options are huge. You have the display saturation, you can increase it. But the normal colors are also there. I have been using it with the saturated one. Even there is a related display engine. You can use that if you're a color pro. And we have this normal live display. There is the color calibration, the RGB control of the screen. In the normal lock screen settings, there is dynamic clock. There is the lift to check phone and everything again. So all these are pretty normal things. And obviously in the infinity suit, this is how the customization section actually looks like. Yes, it's huge customizations everywhere, but I'll try to show you like very quickly. We have the theme kind of section. We have the lock screen kind of section where we have the clock font style. These are the Android 13 kind of lock screen clock font style, I can say. 100 plus options are there. I'm not showing you everything. We have the screen of animation, charging animation, and the carrier name, charging stats, and everything. Weather settings are there. There is media cover art kind of things, ripple effect, and the other vibrations. The normal wallpaper settings is there. There is normal theme settings. And here in this theme settings, we can actually change the setting style if you'd like to. Even the settings animation style and we have the wallpaper style as well. You can add wallpaper blood and everything. The font styles also you can change throughout the system. Even the icon packs are there and the icon shapes as well. Even the signal icon styles. Everywhere it gives you that haptic feedback. It feels really good. Even the navigation and icon styles you can change. There is status bar settings, there is status bar tuner, colored icons, show notification icons. Yes, there is also the battery style. I have been using it as usual with iOS 16, but just notice the amount of options. It's just huge. But with this iOS 16 style, it looks so good to me at least. There is ongoing progress chip. You can enable that. Then there is the Bluetooth battery stats and stuff, Wi-Fi standard logo, brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar and the status bar padding stuff is there. The quick setting panel customization is there, just notice. Even the always on display customization is there. There is ambient wallpaper kind of thing. There is button customization and in-call vibration options. In the power menu, we have the advanced restart and there is secured lock screen as well. In the notification, we have heads up and the heads up customization as well for the notifications. The navigation mode is there and there is the settings. There is a navigation bar, pill length and pill radius customization. There is back gesture animation, back gesture haptic and stuff. Then there is swipe to invoke assistant and the other things. There is circular search. Sidebar kind of features are also there. There is three finger swipe, but you can change that to multiple different things. Obviously for normal taking screenshot, it is working. There is shake gesture as well. So you can use that too. Mystery settings, we have that spoofing and from right here, you can actually select a key box and you can notice other settings. There is unlimited Google photo storage. There is Google app spoof, Play Store spoof, Snapchat spoof, even the Netflix spoof option. There is full screen apps, smart pixels, high developer option. Then there is adaptive playback as well. There is the ignore window secure flags. There is the hide screen capture, no storage restriction. And just notice there is show clipboard overlay, unlimited screen record, pocket detection, etc. So these are mostly all the customizations. And obviously you can check out the team over here. You can donate to the developers from here. So in my experience, I would say this Infinity X version 3.5 is really one of the best ROMs that I have seen based on Android 16 as of today. But let me tell you, I haven't tried QPR1 yet in any ROM. So yeah that's where my opinion is coming from but overall while daily driving i haven't faced any issues at all here almost and the overall experience is even the google pay is working in a custom rom today in, in december 2025 almost it's 2026 this rom uh like best rom of 2025 till date because that's how my experience has been with this rom let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think about this rom on poco f5 i have really enjoyed it and i can still use it but yeah i will definitely try the qpr1 in the next video thank you so much for watching this video guys if you want your friends to know about this latest infinity x version 3.5 and how it's running officially on the poco f5 you can share this video with them give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kd and exciting off today and i'll be watching you guys in the next one bye now